Greetings, fellow privateers. Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to the very first episode of a new series, Playing Star Sector as a Pirate. If you would like to skip the details or overview of this scenario, please use YouTube chapters, and a lot more information about this series can be found in the description. Welcome, everybody, to what was supposed to be the January miniseries marathon that got postponed because I was sick. And in a cruel twist of fate, uh, I have strep now. Uh, but I feel okay at the moment. So I'm going to stream anyway because it only hurts to swallow. It doesn't hurt to speak. Um, for those that are not familiar with what Star Sector is, it's a open world, single player, space combat, role playing, and exploration game with economic uh, elements, uh, sort of like a 4X, if you will. And you take the role of a space captain seeking fortune and glory, however you choose. It's very sandbox. It's also worth noting, it is not sold on Steam. You'll have to go to fractalsoftworks.com to buy it. And this is a marathon streamed one time only, uh, with the caveat that like, if I'm feeling rather ill in let's say, I don't know, six, eight hours or whatever, it might be two marathons split up because I wouldn't deprive you of uh, a long play if I uh, don't have the stamina. Um, so before we start, let's go over the backstory, rules, and goals. Captain Breakfire salvaged an illegal jump drive device called the Janus device and managed to retrofit it to his old salvaged junker fleet. With the newly acquired jump drive, he aims to befriend the pirates and build an empire using the power of jump gates. There's one major hitch, however. Only salvage ships and weapons are compatible with the jump drive technology, so he'll have to form his empire's main fleet out of the scraps found from the galaxy. I will be playing the brand new, as of yesterday, .97A release with no mods, because they really haven't even been updated yet. Uh, sector age is mixed and size is normal and difficult non-Iron Man with the freelancer start. Uh, as far as rules go, I am obviously only going to be using weapons and ships that are salvaged. I am only allowed to purchase fuel supplies, crew, and marines from pirates or black markets. So I have very limited trade possibilities for purchasing. However, I can sell whatever I want to pirates or black markets. I only accept missions or contracts from pirates. I am not going to be working with the other factions. And I can only retrofit at derelict shipyards or self-owned shipyards. So that it's a way of sort of role-playing that essentially no one gets to look at my fleets. So that the fact that I have a Janus jump drive device is kept secret. I only repair at cell phone shipyards for the same reason, or of course, re repairing while traveling in space, but not repairing at non-owned shipyards. Uh, no use of AI cores for pilots or governance, and no Omega or Redacted. If you don't know what that means, you don't need to. The goal, to become cooperative with the pirate faction, which is to say cooperative is the highest level of allegiance, uh, govern govern worlds that fuel black market trade and enterprise. Black market trade and enterprise is mostly population, like organs and drugs, and command a powerful dread fleet made of the scraps found in the galaxy. Um, instead of actually creating a new game, I am going to be loading a game that I already created, and I just want to explain why. It's not that I've tailored anything, it's that for this specific series, I am supposed to start with a jump drive. The mods that let you add a jump drive aren't updated to the latest version. So what I had to do is I had to uninstall uh, Star Sector, install the older version, install the mod that adds jump drives, create a new game, add the jump drive to the new game, and then update to the newest version. So it's something that I wouldn't really be able to do on stream very easily. So what I'm doing is I'm loading in a not any more than like two seconds played uh, save game file that I created in .96 to add the jump drive in, then port it over to .97. There is um there is a little bit of a problem with that, which is there's a new section of the galaxy map that has been added in .97, but I'm pretty sure it will work anyway. So here we go. 
loading in as break fire. So I actually don't even know. I didn't check. I don't even know what I have in terms of a fleet. This is a freelancer start. If you're unfamiliar with that, what it means is like just randomized. I'm given like random ships. Um, so let's figure it out. I have a mule, a not pirate smuggler mule, just a standard mule, not a particularly strong ship. However, um, I do have an assault to an enforcer. Enforcers are not bad. Enforcers are, are pretty, pretty good ships, much better than mules. So I'll probably move over to my mule or move, move from my mule to the enforcer. Uh, these are also demodded. Uh, so this has degraded engines and increased maintenance. And we have also got a, uh, a hound, which uh, is not good. And then we do have a standard freighter, which is going to help us move some cargo and a phaeton. So I actually got pretty lucky with um, storage, to be honest. Uh, one of the worries that I had in starting this series is that I would not have the capacity to move cargo. Because I'm not allowed to buy ships, it means that cargo ships and fuel ships will have to be found. The game does let you find a whole lot of drams, which is like this smaller fuel ship. There's drams all over the galaxy that are just like derelict. But starting with a Vaton is pretty awesome. And then the other captain is going to be raffled off in a minute. And uh, she started with helmsmanship, which is not terrible. Uh, this is workable. Uh, I can't really refit anything outside of my so you can refit in space but refitting in space will cause loss of combat readiness which can cost supplies to then repair uh, which is not ideal but uh, what i will do is i will add some additional ordinances just like vents and capacitors to the ships so let's see what we've got um this little enforcer has heavy auto cannons which are kind of meh flat cannons which are pretty good uh, heavy mortar, which is decent. Uh, the Reaper class torpedoes are pretty decent, and then the harpoon MRMs are uh, pretty decent as well. So it's, it's really not that bad of a um, a starter ship, but it's very much a tanky missile ship. Uh, weapon groups, let's see. So the primary weapon group I'm gonna want. These auto cannons have a range of 800, and the Mauler mortar rather has a range of 700. I could probably put them on the same weapon group and fire on them together. Then I'm gonna put the flax that are sort of my point defense on its own second weapon group. And then I'm not gonna be auto firing the harpoons or reapers. Um, and I might want them on all of their own separate groups. So the harpoons have three shots each and the reapers have one. So yeah, I'll put them on their own separate weapon groups. So I'm gonna have Reapers on three and four and Harpoons on five and six, manually controlled. I start off with an ITU, which is pretty good. Gives me a little bit more range and a flux distributor, um, which increases the flux dissipation rate, which isn't terrible. Although for a ballistic missile ship, Flux is not something I'm going to need to dissipate all that often because energy weapons cause a lot more flux than ballistic ones. But all in all, not bad. Not bad at all. Um, so what I want to do right at the start here is to start picking up pirate missions and salvage for a bigger fleet. One of the really important things is to make sure that you have the supplies and the fuel to remain uh, combat ready and able to travel. And these, the costs of supplying and fueling up your fleet um, is not inconsequential. Uh, this is also the Janus device. I could right click it to integrate it into my fleet, but I'm just gonna treat it as an item. It works either way. So we are here in the galaxy. And if you're unfamiliar with this game, the core worlds are um, are always sort of the same. And there are different factions. So for those that are really unfamiliar with the game, you have the hegemony, which is like the um, de facto militarized sort of leader slash bully of the galaxy. 
where they, uh, you know, AI cores are illegal, harvested organs, recreational drugs. They're, they're sort of the police state. The Luddock Church and the Luddock Path, the Luddock Church are religious and the Luddock Path are like zealots. They're radicalized. The Persian League, which is like a somewhat league of independent, um, independent planets that form their own sort of governance. But then you also have the independents, which are um, not part of the Persian League. And then the Sindrian Dictat, uh, which really only operates one like mega, mega solar system. And they're a bit of an economic powerhouse, if you will. And then Tritachion, um, which is a corporation that has a lot fewer laws and and um, prioritizes more like high tech, high energy uh, weaponry and ships. And then of course the pirates, who I am currently hostile with. So that is something that I wish to change. And the pirates are just like ind lawless independence, um, for the mo for the most part. There is a pirate station nearby, but because they're hostile with me, they're just as likely to blow me out of the sky as they are to help. But what I can do is I can travel to these other worlds, like Jengala, to see if there are um, people in the bars or, com well, mostly in the bars that might represent pirate interests. Um, so this is one such person, for instance, who is asking me to deliver an item to a dead drop location. Um, but this location is, it's in within, I could get there. It would cost me a lot of fuel, but it, it gives me a lot of money. So I'm gonna take this dead drop. It's, it's not bad. And the one in the cheap business suit uh, just wants me to run a merchant run and I'm gonna decline that. I don't need that. So at the start, it really is helpful to both check the missions that are being offered because I'm going to be looking for pirate missions and pirate missions. The ones that I would really like to find would be the derelict ship missions because derelict ship missions almost always are paired with derelict um, with debris fields full of derelict ships, which is going to make it really easy to expand my fleet, especially once I start getting story points. So the way the game works is when you level up, each time you level up, you gain one skill point to be added to the skill tree. And I already picked my first skill, which is salvaging. Uh, given the theme of the series, I, I figured that was uh, fitting. And then for every skill point you get, you get story points. And story points can be used to trigger like plot armor like things. So if you're getting ambushed by a fleet, you can use a story point to get away. Um, if you find a ship that is unsalvageable, you can use a story point to salvage it anyway. So story points are really nice to have banked up in order to do things that you would otherwise not be able to do. Um, I think that we're going to be using a lot of our story points for built-in S mods into our ships to make them uh, super tuned. And also story points to recover ships that would otherwise be unrecoverable. Oh, so here is a pirate mission being offered. Um, analyze a domain era probe. And I'm going to accept this one as well. Essentially, I am very interested in accepting more or less every um, pirate mission I can get a hands my hands on that I think I have a fair chance at actually completing. So here at Asharu, I'm going to buy some black market fuel just to make sure that I have enough fuel to go from point A to point B of where I need to go for the missions. And I'm also going to activate the Corvus Gate. We do start off with a... Um, with a jump drive device. So I'm not entirely sure if the, I don't think the storyline jump drive device, well, well, we'll see. I'm about to learn something here. Oh, uh, do I have to incorporate that? It is inert, you know? I may not have done this right, but that's that's okay. If I don't get to jump, I don't get to jump. That'll be an error. I thought just a uh, console adding the jump drive device would be enough. So 
So we have two missions. One to go to a domain error probe. And another... Oh, no, that's not it. Yeah, domain error probe and delivering black market dead drop stuff. If I need to trigger the quest, um, it's a moot point because the mods that would allow me to do that are, are not updated, so it doesn't help or matter. Oh, and here we go. I have pirates that are attacking me right off the bat. So we're entering our first combat situation. Uh, they are attacking with two mules. And let's get that going. There we go. Where'd my mule go? Why is my mule... Oh, my mule is attacking some cargo ship. All right, I'm putting my harpoons on auto-fire. Uh, they burned out my engines, so I can't move at the moment. Let's burn drive at them. They're trying to get away. I'm trying to put distance. Wow, I really burned. I just, like, slammed into them. The, so the Enforcer I'm currently piloting is a small destroyer, uh, but it has a lot of armor, and it has pretty good mobility with that burn drive. And I am not letting this ship get away, even though I am high on flux. It's doing a lot worse than I am. All right, I've lost my engines, so I'm just going to vent here. How is my other mule doing? So the mule and the um, the hound have killed the mule that was harassing. The problem that I have right now is that my because I tried to disengage, the buffalo and the phaeton that I have is getting harassed. No, oh, that's gonna be annoying. I'm still in flame out. Meaning that I don't have, uh, control. Oh, there we go. Now I have control over my engines. What I should have done is just engage them right away. I'm not super eager about having to constantly fight pirates, but... They picked the fight, so it doesn't really hurt rep when, uh, I'm the victim. This, uh, this mule here is having some serious, uh, regrets, I think, messing with me. Alright, so the buffalo did get away, that's good. I hope the phaeton gets away as well. There was only, like, a kite and something else that was small that was chasing it down. Pretty insignificant. Okay, the phaeton did get away. Good. And all that is left is to take out a mud skipper and a kite, which are, like, two tiny, tiny little... Ships. The kite is, I think, the smallest sh ship in the game other than fighters. Ah, uh, but my hound got disabled, which is fine. The hound is a pretty junk ship. They're also tiny, and just because things are disabled doesn't necessarily mean I can't recover them at the end of the fight. As, um, as I level up and I gain more experience, I'll also have the ability to recover ships that otherwise wouldn't be recoverable. So I think that's the uh, hound right there that got disabled. There's the mud skipper. And then the... Uh, that doesn't... Oh, the, there's also a wolf up here too. I think that's a wolf. Yeah. So let's kick the mud skipper out of the fight and then focus on the wolf. The wolf is probably the most dangerous of the three, but this mud skipper's already on the uh, on the ropes. It's gone. 
So wolves can do short range teleports, so they're really good at getting out of like annoying situations with their teleport ability. And there it is. So they're kind of an. I don't like trying to chase them down because they will. They're squirrely. They're not like um, super combat effective. Like they're not killers. They're mosquitoes. Ah, oh, I burn drive right past him. All right, the kite is now disabled. The other mule took out the kite. So now the mule just will start to travel towards me, helping me with the wolf. Um, at this point, we've won the battle, but I might as well just destroy as many ships as I can for the experience and the salvage. Because I have the salvage ability, which means I gain more um, materials, fuel, etc. off of destroyed ships and battle. You can run, but well, I guess that's all you can do. Oh, and you're teleporting away. I might just claim victory if it continues to flee from me. Because it's um it's a faster moving ship, so we'll consider that done. All right, ship recovery. I can now recover my hound. I could also recover their... Oh, shielded. Oh, you know what? I'm also going to recover their shielded combat freighter. So the shielded combat freighter has shielded cargo holds, which means it uh, protects it from police scans. Uh, basically, smuggler. A smuggler Cerberus. And then the other one is a mud skipper that I don't really care for. Relationships with the pirates have gone down. Uh, but that was kind of unavoidable. I, what I should have done is I should have been ready to, like, actually dodge this fleet, but I wasn't. So we did just gain our first story point, and um, that's going to help us to avoid fights like that if we want to escape them in the future. And I do have some of the tip and tutorial stuff popping up. Okay, we also salvaged the kite that was there. So, uh, where are we headed? Dead drop is closer. And then we can go to the probe. So I think the best way to go forward is to refuel somewhere. Re refuel it maybe. Uh, so the dead drop is at Alpha Manuela which is here. So refueling at Betis before going all the way there. And this is just warning me that the ship that I had just um, salvaged is damaged, which I know. Traveling slowly through the uh, hyperstorm. Ah, oh, I went too fast in the hyperstorm. So if you hold S, uh, you can travel slowly through storms and it prevents damage. Now, the Ludic Church is... no? For a second, I thought the Ludic Church was going to try to um, slap me with some tithes, but uh, they didn't. So I'm going to take on some black market uh, supplies here. 
The other thing is we only use salvaged weapons, so it would be wise for me to start building up a supply of weapons that I get from fights because I, I don't have, um, I'm not gonna have the ability to buy these things as a restriction of this series. So, um, Vulcan cannons are really good point, small ballistic point defense and assault chain guns when you have a ship full of assault chain guns can also be pretty good. So those would be handy for me to hold on to. And I'm essentially planning on just like refueling as much as I really can afford. I do have that Phaeton, so I can afford quite a lot. So I'm bankrupting myself, and the point of bankrupting myself is so that I can do the two missions that I was tasked with without um, without having to stop. And this picket here uh, wants to scan me because I did black market trades. They can scan me, they're not going to find anything suspicious. I didn't buy organs or anything like that. It would be good at some point um, to drop into an abandoned station and refit the Phaeton and refit the um, the Buffalo for faster drives so that I can travel quicker. That way I can outrun um, pickets and the like. Because I would very much like to be a smuggler and it does being a good smuggler means being able to outmaneuver your uh the the law so once i i'm done with these two missions maybe that will be top of mind How was the new update? I only played it a few hours yesterday, uh, but I did check out some of the newer um, additions to it, and it's pretty cool. I wasn't able to get to a point where I could um, create my own slipstreams, but I did check out the Abyss. I don't want to spoil anything, but it was pretty cool. All right, so we need to deliver to a dev drop some more specified. Oh, it's right here. Perfect. Okay. So pirate relationship went up three after it dropped three. Uh, there is a gate here, interestingly. And then there's all these domain era probes. So as long as the probes aren't guarded, I don't mind salvaging them. We do have a lot of storage space. Oops, go back for the debris field. We do have a lot of storage space for that because of the buffalo and... Oh, we're even getting gamma cores. There's not really much to do with gamma cores in this series for me. Like in the game, yes, but for this specific series, not so much. Um, yeah, we, we could take those little drones out. That shouldn't be too bad. I'm going to say the mule should be my uh, escort. I'm going to put the harpoon MRMs on auto fire. Whoa, okay. They are just letting rip immediately. That's fine. And these are like, um, the way to describe the things that I'm fighting right now, they're like ancient, barely more than derelict, sort of, um, ow sort of uh, AI, like they're AI controlled ancient derelicts that are just automated to protect the colony, colony ships in the deck stuff. Let's get this annoying one out of my way. He's just hammering my armor. Be gone. This little... I'm surprised they still have missiles. How many missiles do you have, man? All of them. Oh, 
Oh, Swarmer SRMs, yeah, that's why. Now, what do we got over here? More little missile ships? Done. Another story point. So I'm like halfway to leveling and also another survey ship location. So those survey ship locations are going to be really handy, especially when I have a, a bit, uh, a fleet that can handle a little bit more combat because, um, because they will, uh, they're, they're usually treasure troves of nice stuff. Sometimes ancient technology, supplies, etc. Oh. Uh, sensors. Officer frowns at a blinking indicator. Captain, there appears to be a faint signal coming from low orbit. They pull a detailed scan of the transmission source to the primary bridge display. An optional uh, orbital nav grid overlay with icons and telemetry. The uh, transmission is very weak. We only picked it up as the survey array ran through its calibration cycle. It looks like an automated instrument package deployed in low orbit. Power source is degraded. It's got to have been here for a while. And the signal. Your signal officer uh, activates the audio output, a garbled loop wailing in and out of coherence, a recorded voice. Their transmission must be damaged, but with a little work, a hint of pride enters their voice there. Ment of the Glacia Academy. If found, I implore you to return the data core to the Academy for a award of 1800 credits authorized by Provost uh, Kalachor. Message will repeat. Um, so because my jump drive didn't work, I'm going to retrieve this core um, after inspecting the data. So I'll read this. Your ops chief oversees a retrieval mission by the book, staging approach and scan to maximize safety in the events of environmental and technological hazards. The Salvor uh, team is used um, to your chief's attention and to detail, and within the hour, place the instrument package data core in an EM sealed crate. Cursor inspection by your technology officer to make sure that this isn't some kind of bomb or rogue AI reveals a data core packed to its limit with compressed telemetry streams. It's a lot of data, they say, scrolling through a vast column of numbers. What is it? Well, your technology officer brow furrows, recording sensor logs, detecting, um, they pause the data feed, examining for, uh, some of the numbers, some kind of field strength. You're beginning to get the impression that your tech officer doesn't know what the device was measuring. All right, good. Then the, uh, Academy will pay for its recovery. So I might make an exception to the don't help the independence with the speed running the uh, the jump drive quest line. Uh oh, who is this? Intercepting my fleet. How about we e-burn? Get the hell away from me. I'm turning off my um, my uh, transponder so that I can't be found as easily because I don't want to be found. I'd like to get back to that debris field, because there's a lot of ships. A Medusa destroyer, a Buffalo freighter, a Mercury... De there's a lot of ships sort of sitting there being guarded by whatever that fleet was that tried to intercept me. I also managed to get a whole lot of fuel. Oh, a Griffin missile cruiser? Alright, I think the uh, right approach to this is to make sure that I can go come back to this uh, solar system because at present I don't really have the means to um, to take advantage of all of the uh, all of the ships that are here because if I'm to run the other pirate mission um, these ships would require me to go back to the core sectors but uh, if we go back to Alpha Manuela, uh, I will make sure to 
profit as much as I can from those ships, especially if we have the story points to recover them, because some of those ships might be worth recovering. So there's a probe down in Janna. The probe is orbiting a jump point in the star system. And I have plenty of fuel from all that salvage we just did uh, to get down there. We're being thrown about by the storm. Oh, and here's one of the uh, slipstreams. I can go around it in this case because it ends just around here where this black hole is. And now we're back on course for Jenna. I like to do initial uh, surveys of these, the planets, as long as it's convenient. Uh, especially the ones that look habitable. Or uh, ones that have uh, ruins. So, it's probably near this fringe jump point. Because I don't think it was near the jump point that I came in on. Yep, it's here. And it's being guarded. Let's cut through the guards. Same sort of setup. Oops. That was a misclick. Uh, delete point. Mule, escort me. And we're headed in. Whoa! It tried to Reaper me. The mule's holding up. I'm gonna put some distance between me so they ha have to come from uh, one direction rather than spreading out. And luckily, I have plenty of supplies, and this ship can tank. I wish the debris wasn't in my way, though. There's the husk of that uh, destroyed ship that's, like, right in front of me. There's another one. Nice, the mule got one of the sentries. Marauder, thank you for the resub. And Dom, and Ba, and Scorpio for all the gifted subs. Come on, little man. Let's dance. Oh, good. I got a flame out. 
They're not going anywhere. And done. Okay, we are a little bit over our carry capacity, so I'm going to dump some of the supplies. Got another story point. I know where another survey ship is. So we have uh, information about, I think, three survey ships, which is quite a lot. Um, and then also importantly, we're building up a, um, a supply of heavy machinery. Heavy machinery is one of those things that I'm not allowed to buy in this series. So if we want to do surveying or setting up stable points or hacking or any of the stuff that requires heavy machinery, it's really nice to have a supply of it that we get from salvage. Thank you for tuning in to Star Sector Scrappy Privateer, which originally streamed live on Twitch February 3rd and February 4th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below, but please keep in mind that this is a series from a marathon stream, meaning that changes cannot be made to the series. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Radamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, a link can be found in the description of this video or also at Radamont.com. Additionally, in the description of this video is a link to the details about this series, if you're wondering about the scenario series rules or goals. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. Hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow privateers.